Adrift in the great void of space, the personnel on Moon Base Alpha have experienced so much that is strange and inexplicable. They have become accustomed to expecting the unexpected. Paul, did you hear that? You hear what? Uh, I don't hear anything unusual. Welcome to the audio handbook of the Marvel Universe, a character-by-character -character look at the coolest heroes and villains that Marvel Comics has to offer. You can thank us later. For now, just listen. All right, Cool Breeze, it is me, Icy Robots, and we are riding this mellow groove. We are here for another exciting episode of the audio handbook of the Marvel Universe, where we take a look at some of the coolest heroes and villains that Marvel Comics has to offer in this week. This week, we're going to take a look at a fun one. A gal who goes by the name of Shanna the She-Devil. Now, Shanna's another one I don't know a ton about. So, we are going to be taking this journey together. This journey of education side by side. So, let's, let's bang that gong. Let's light up some of that incense. And let's see what there is, what there is to learn about Shanna the She-Devil. <laughs> You are listening to IC Robots Radio. What we like to do here on the show, how we like to how we like to approach things is through the lens of the famous 80s comic book, comic book guide known as the Handbook of the Marvel Universe. It is a encyclopedia of comic characters, comic objects, comic items, comic locations, and all other sorts of cool stuff that was published by Marvel Comics back in the 80s. What we have right here is, you can kind of hear it rustling about a bit. This is Volume 9, Issue 9, from September of 1983. And this covers from the letter Q all the way through to the letter S. This is, this is the one we used also when we looked at Rom, the Space Knight. The entry for Shana, Shanna, the She-Devil is between Shamrock and the Shaper of Worlds. Shamrock is kind of cool. She has a green outfit with a uh, clover on her chest as well as on her head. And the Shaper of Worlds is... He looks a bit like a scroll, but he has tank treads for legs. And he is... He's all white. He is colored white like, like a ghost. Maybe it is a pale blue. Uh... I'm not too familiar with this dude. It lists his occupation as a reality manipulator. I wonder I wonder how one gets into the business of manipulating reality. You probably probably have to get started on your own. Show people what you could do before you move into the big times. I I would think. But I don't know that for sure. So what we what we can see here when we look at it immediately is that Shanna only has a half a page of an entry. Sometimes Sometimes they will split them in half and you will only get half the page to yourself. Whereas some dudes will get two, three, four, even five pages if you're like a Captain America type. So Shanna shares a page with Shamrock. Try to say that three times, three times quick. So when we, we can tell right off the bat that she is not the biggest character in all of Marveldom. But she does have a cool name and we are... We're going to learn what there is to learn about her. The The details of her life are as such. Her real name is Shanna O'Hara. She is of Irish descent. Her occupation is a former veterinarian. Now she is an adventurer. Her identity is publicly known. That means everybody knows about her and they know that she is Shanna O'Brien. She is a citizen of the United States without a criminal record. Her former aliases are none. She was born in Zaire, Africa. She's married. Her known relatives are Kevin Plunder, a.k.a. Kazar, Gerald, her father, Patricia, her mom, Bob, her uncle, Mele, her husband, who is now deceased, Layla, her stepdaughter, and she is affiliated with no known groups. And her base of operations is... The Savage Lands. She she first appeared in Shanna the She Devil number one. Let's uh, let's take a look at her origin. This is this is the meat the meat of the episode. So Shanna O'Hara was the only daughter of Gerald O'Hara, an American big game hunter, born in Africa where her parents had lived 
she spent her early childhood in the jungle. When she was six, Shonda looked on in horror as her father accidentally shot and killed her mother while hunting a rogue leopard. This incident, which began Shonda's lifelong loathing of firearms, she was so traumatized that her father decided to send her back to the United States to live with the relatives. Shauna's upbringing was financed by the wealth her father's African diamond mines and investments generated. Following high school, she entered college and majored in biology and veterinary medicine, eventually earning a doctorate. That's good. She's accomplished. She is, she's a full-on doctor of veterinary sciences, I guess. Is that what it is? I think that's what it is. So let's see what we, what could we kind of, kind of learn from that? She was born in the jungle and her father accidentally murdered her own mother. I guess murder isn't the wrong, is the wrong way to put it. He, he accidentally killed her. I guess she was under assault by some kind of a rogue, rogue big cat. And in trying to shoot the big cat, he instead shot his own wife. That must have, that must have been incredibly traumatic for him. I can't imagine the, the pain you would feel if you accidentally killed somebody that you, that you loved in a hunting accident. And I, I, you know, my heart goes out to Shanna for having to witness that. And her father must have been, he must have been so just, you know, insane in the membrane over this that he sent her away. He sent, he sent his daughter away. Maybe, maybe she even resembled his wife and he just couldn't bear to see her. And he was just, he was too saddened in his heart. So he sent her to New York. And that must have been, that must have been such a... Just a culture shock for poor Shanna. It, it reminds me of of Mean Girls when Lindsay Lohan comes from Africa and has to go to school with with all of those nasty those nasty people that uh, you know torment her. I wonder I wonder if that's what it was like for for poor Shanna. I wonder if anybody asked her why she was white if she's from Africa. So if you're from Africa, why are you white? Oh my God, Karen, you can't just ask people why they're white. Mantis Seafried is really great in Mean Girls. You, you could see that she was going to be a good actress from that. She really took that character that they gave her, and she she ran with it. She did some good stuff. And um, Rachel McAdams is great as Regina George as well. That whole movie is terrific. You would have you would have thought that Lindsay Lohan would have owned the world after after that. But those demons, man, those personal demons, they'll get you. Let's. Let's move forth. Shanna was hired as the environmental specialist for the Central Park Municipal Zoo in New York, where her natural affinity for animals enabled her to walk among even the most ferocious big cats unharmed. At the zoo, she raised many animals from infancy, including a female leopard named Giuliani. I wonder if it was named after the mayor, who was not even elected yet. When the leopard was senselessly killed by a zoo guard after a sniper had murdered most of the other big cats in the zoo, Shanna tendered her resignation. Zoo officials persuaded her, however, to take the two surviving zoo-born leopards to the Dahoney Reserve in Africa. These were Eni and Beery. Rather, Ina and Beery, Giuliani's cubs, and Shanna enthusiastically took them in her charge. What is going on here? This whole thing... This whole thing is bananas. There is, there's a sniper who's sniping at the zoo, shooting the big cats. What, what a maniac. If you do, if you do something like that, if you senselessly just murder animals in the zoo from a sniper distance, they ought to, they ought to give you the death penalty because you are, you are just, you're a menace to society. You are nothing but trouble and they need to get rid of you right now. And I... I'm not even a proponent of the death penalty, but if you if you plan out some kind of a big big plot to go to the zoo and sniper all the lions, you're a weirdo and you are dangerous and you need you need to be taken care of. And I wonder I wonder what happened in there as well. How did how did one of the guards accidentally kill poor Giuliani? I I cannot even imagine. Maybe Maybe she leapt out at him when he was in the cage checking on the status of the wounded cats. No, that doesn't make sense. That wouldn't be something that a guard would do. That would be something that that Shanna would do. And man, the people at the guard, the people at the zoo, rather, they must have been so shooken up after that sniper incident that they would even consider giving tiger cubs to a 
to an employee who is resigning. Now, I guess we learned earlier that she has shown that she has a very, very tight kinship with the animals. You know, she's able to to walk amongst them unharmed. But even with that, just giving tigers away to a citizen, that uh, that's some questionable behavior for the zoo, I think. But they did what they had to do after that after that heinous sniper attack. What a what a terrible thing to do. I'm I'm I I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that I I have no problem with hunting at all. Do do what you feel as far as eating food and feeding your family and such by by hunting, but when dudes go to Africa to trophy hunt tigers and lions, that's that's some pretty sketchy behavior to me and anybody who would anybody who would sniper animals at the zoo, that's I don't know. That's pretty whacked out. Let's uh, let's move forward into more more Shanna info. Actually, let's take a quick pause and let's listen to this piece of video we got of somebody somebody stepping to a Shauna cosplayer at a comic book show. It's a uh, it's it's a bit fun. Shana the She-Devil? Yes. Wow, I love your costume. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You're pretty. Thank you. You're not going to stab me or anything, are you? Uh, it depends on how annoying you are. Yeah. Well, I just said you were pretty, and I'm just walking by. And can I check out your costume? Uh, sure. For your get-up for today? Sure. It's just regular uh, overalls and a really thick spear. All right, I'll get out of here now. Bye. Bye. I love... That piece of video, it's so great. The guy, the guy sounds so creepy. You're not, you're not going to stab me, are you? I, I said you're pretty. Uh, let's, let's see what you're wearing. It's so, it's so gross and it's so great. You gotta, you gotta see this. If you, if you ever buy here, I'll, uh, I'll show it to you. It's fantastic. So, where are we? Where are we? As far as also, I noticed that she said Shauna, the she devil. I've been going back and forth between Shauna and Shanna. I know not. I could see how. You could pronounce it either way, and I bet different individuals have different pronunciations. So, take that for what it's worth. She said Shauna, and she would she would know she is a Shauna fan, or she's a model that was hired to dress up as Shauna, and she knows just as much as anybody. I, I don't, I don't know. Let's, let's get back into the info here. As they left civilization behind, a bond was formed between the woman and the beasts. As Shauna, wearing Giuliani's pelt for sight scent recognition with the cubs, they began to realize how much she was like these creatures. Taking to the jungle as if it were her native element, she quickly developed into a strong, swift jungle dweller. Her athletic prowess, hot temper, and mane of red hair soon gained her the name Shauna the She-Devil. Accompanied by her soon-grown pet leopards and the Disharmony Reserve game warden Patrick McShane, she became a protector of the reserve against poachers and all other exploiters. So right there, that is... That's the basic. That's the basic gist of the Shanda the She-Devil story. You get through the origin all the way up into the conflict and you get to see her... Her base of operations is going to be this game reserve, and she's going to protect it from poachers. You could have endless adventures, as I understand it, and I am not an expert in this field by any means. The poaching problem in Africa is huge. People are going for ivory. People are going for, like, rhino tusks and all other other sorts of things, and... They are well-armed, and they are well-organized, and you could just have so many adventures with this girl fighting to protect, you know, the white leopards and fighting to protect the rhinos. This is, this is good stuff. Uh, you could see this jumping off into a whole bunch of other interesting stories. Tragedy repeatedly struck Shauna after her move to Africa, as one by one her father, her lover McShane, and her friend S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Jakuna Singh, and even Ina and Brina. Beery. Why do I keep getting their names wrong? Let's uh, let's do a take two while leaving take one in there. And Ina and Beery were murdered by various enemies of hers. That's uh, that is a very strong superhero trope. You build up, you build up a side character that the the readers or the viewers or whatever get to get to love, and then you strike them down. So you get you get this strong revenge story, but. I do not think that killing the two leopards was a move that I would make when 
when I was talking to the old wife about this episode, she's like, well, you know, what's, uh, what's the, the basic story of Shauna? And I, you know, I started telling it to her as I understood at the time. And when I got to the part where the two leopards were killed to get heat on some villain, she just said, just stop right now. I don't want to know anymore. Those, those leopards are probably so cute. And I can't believe, I can't believe they got shot. I bet that, I bet that when they did it in the comics, they lost readers. People, people do not like to, to read about fictional animals that they've come to care about getting killed. That's just, that's just taking it just one step too far. These things though, they, they all took their toll on Shanna as we will, we will soon see. Shanna's quest for vengeance and her intense feelings of guilt over the deaths of those she loved drove her into a state of acute anxiety, and she decided to move back to the United States for a short length of time in America. While she was in America, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this part off the cuff. While she was in America, she managed to find the people who killed the cubs. She took them out. She found the people who killed that shield agent she knew. She took them out, but even that that didn't fulfill her like she thought it would. It kind of kind of made her feel like maybe maybe she was becoming a bad person. So she, she decided she needed to go even further, even further away from society than she was before. And that took her all the way to the Savage Land, which is this terrible wilderness on the South Pole. And it is so remote and so just so dense and packed with whatever that there are there are actually dinosaurs still there. It's bananas. It's crazy. But while she was there, she met and fell in love with a guy named Kazar. And as far as I know, they are still together today. The last time, the last time I saw Shanna in a book was during the, during the secret invasion, the scroll invasion of Earth. The new Avenger team went to the Savage Land to follow up on on some kind of a lead. They had some lead on some scrolls. So they went there. And while they were there, they bumped into Shanna and Kazar, who were also looking into something. But what they were looking into was like a shield work camp that was taking some of the some of the Neanderthals that were in the Savage Land and forcing them into labor. They were they were not down with that at all. So they were investigating it on one level, but the whole thing turned out to be like a scroll outpost. So the Avengers and her and Kazar were all on the same page and they defeated the Skrulls together. That was, that was the last time I saw her in a book, but she was blonde and in between, in between the end of her run as like a 70s, 80s star and that turn in the new Avengers, her comic was taken over by Frank Cho. Frank Cho is a really terrific artist. He draws he draws pinup style gals. That's his thing. He draws very, very buxom gals, but he he's really good at it. And they gave him, they gave him the reins of Shanna, and she was going to fall into the Marvel Max line that they had at the time. This was like an adults only thing. They had some really good books there, like Alias was there, and I think there was, there was a War Machine book, a whole, whole bunch of good stuff. They, what they did was they removed the Comics Code Authority and they went to the Max. And one of the things they were going to have was the Shanna book. And the the hook of this was that there was, there was going to be nudity. Frank Cho was going to draw Shanna, Shanna in the buff. And that was kind of groundbreaking for Marvel at the time. But they, they decided not to go through with it all the way. And they eventually took that aspect out and just kind of released it as sort of a pinup style jungle girl book. You know, she was... She was wearing like really skimpy clothes and she was drawn in a buxom way. It was, you know, it was cool, I guess. If you, if you dig that sort of thing, let's, uh, let's hop on to the internet really quick. I, I'm already logged in, which is nice. I've managed to keep the connection the whole dial up time that we were here. Let's hop onto the, You've got onto the site that is known as eBay, where you can sometimes purchase comic books and things and let's see what the cost would be for the first appearance of Shanna the She-Devil which is Shanna the She-Devil number one. That book, that book, let's see, let's look at the solds. That is how you get your best idea of what people are actually, actually paying here. Somebody bought one at an auction. They got it for 16 bucks. 
the cover of that is drawn by Starenko. That's very nice. Somebody got one here in very fine condition for 63 bucks. A graded copy, graded at 9.2. That's very good for a 70s book. That went for 100 and 130 bucks. This is this is actually a comic that I have. I picked it up for six dollars at an antique mall in Reno. Me and the old wife were on a uh, on a birthday trip to Reno. It was my birthday, and while we were there, we hit up some some antique malls. And I'm not I'm not the biggest dude for antique malls. I like to go and look. You know, an antique mall is one of those places where there are various vendor slots with you know different. Different merchandise and different prices and whatever. I, I like them sometimes, but every once in a while you'll go to one and they'll have like a retro booth or like a comic booth or something. And this one, this one had a comic booth and I was able to, able to grab this Shaun of the She-Devil for six bucks. I, I have it over on the wall. I can see it from here. I'm down on, on the Earth base. It's one of, one of my cool comics. I, I collect first appearances of, of female characters. I like first appearances in general, but I do like first appearances of female superheroes. It's kind of, kind of an area that I, I focus on. You gotta, you gotta pick a focus if you're going to collect stuff. You can't just collect everything. Find one small niche thing and collect that. That's, that's my advice. And I, I collect female superheroes. So I was happy, happy to pick up Shanna the She-Devil. So I think that's about it. This is a bit, a bit shorter than usual, but it is, it is only a half a page entry for Shanna the She-Devil. And I don't know, that just gets you about 20, 20 minutes or so of info. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I did. Shanna the She-Devil's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind seeing her come back. Uh, oh, do I have any Shanna toys? I do. I have a Shanna the She-Devil mini mate. Where is it? Hold on. I am going to, here it is right here. I have it right next to the desk. It's a pretty cool one. She has a spear as well as a knife. And she came in a two-pack with Sauron. I have her right here. Can you hear her sort of wiggling around? There she is. I'm right next to the microphone as if she is. As if she's going to say something. There was that. They also have made a Marvel Universe. That's the the smaller ones, like a three and three-quarter inch. I think they're a bit. I think they're maybe four inches. They made that. They haven't made a Marvel Legend as far as I know, but I do know there are a few busts, a few busts of Shanda the She-Devil. So with that, with that, we're going to get up out of here. Let me, uh, let me shut down the power. I, I'm out of here for the, for the day. Let me shut this down. This is me, your boy Icy Robots. This is the audio handbook of the Marvel Universe, Shanna the She-Devil. I'm signing off. Until next time, make mine Marvel. This has been an Icy Robots Radio production.